It's October and you know what that means. It means that I have to do a video to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. Since I am determined to make this channel a thing, I am this close to selling my soul to the devil to make it happen. Especially if it's this dishy devil. Nice. Actually, you know what? This is a lot hotter than that. No offense to like good arms and stuff, but come on, a dude who listens to you when you're talking about nothing, that's the stuff. Don't worry, if anything goes awry, I have John Constantine on speed dial. I really want those two to have the most fun show ever where they like make out periodically. That's the stuff that my dreams are made of lately. That was way too much information. Anyway, to appease the YouTube algorithm gods, we are gonna do a listicle, a two-part listicle. Both parts of these are my top 10 list of what to dress up as for Halloween. There are a lot of parties to go to and a lot of houses to trick or treat at. These lists are Latino Hispanic related, of course, that's what this whole channel is about. This video is my top 10 Latino Hispanic historical figures you can dress up as. It's a fun and subtle way to point out that Latino Hispanic folks have history, make history, and are a big part of history. Some rules if you're gonna choose to be any one of the people on this list as a costume. Number one, don't do brown or black face. That is a good general rule of thumb and something I shouldn't even have to tell you but inevitably some damn fool thinks doing brown or black or yellow face is a good idea. Don't do it. Do not do it. Mm -mm. Never. You can do the hair. You can do the outfit. Just don't do the skin color or eye shape. Just no. Number two, do some research on the person you're dressing up as. If someone asks you about who and why you dressed up as that person, you should know who they are and why you dressed up as them. Also, it's a good icebreaker slash conversation starter. You'll automatically look smarter, well-informed, and elegant if you can accurately answer people's questions about your costume. Remember, this first list is not about costumes, but do Doing respectful homages to great Latino Hispanic folks who are important to history. Enough with the charla, let's get into it. Historical figures. Number one, Frida Kahlo. I did an entire video about why profiting from Frida's image is beyond wrong. I'll leave a link to it down in the carcancha below so you can check it out if you haven't already. Mexico's most iconic artist, political figure, and pure Mexicanidad, Frida is a great choice for homage on Halloween. Her clothes alone are an amazing trip through indigenous customs and traditions that folks don't really know about. Do a couple's costume and do the two Fridas painting and really trip people out. I love Frida and more folks need to know about her as a badass artist and less as a selfie queen. Ugh, gross. Number two, Elena Ochoa. There is this misconception about Latino Hispanic folks that we are not well educated or are interested in book learning. That could not be further from the truth. Case in point, Elena Ochoa, the first Hispanic female astronaut to go to space. She has a bachelor's in physics, a master's and a doctorate in engineering, a literal NASA scientist and researcher, incredibly accomplished and super decorated. If you need to prove that Hispanics are smart and educated actually, tell them about Elena Ochoa. Number three, Selena. Do I even have to explain Selena to you guys? I'll have Cristela Alonso explain it. Selena. For those of you that don't know Selena, Selena is the closest thing Latinos have to a superhero. She is a Mexican-American singer. She died over 20 years ago. We still talk about what she could have done or if Selena was still here. <laughs> Selena died over 25 years ago and she is still an inspirational positive icon in the Latin community. My favorite song of hers is El Chico del Apartamento 512. What's yours? Number four, Silvia Rivera. A sometimes forgotten LGBT
LGBTQIA pioneer, Silvia Rivera was a trans woman who was at the forefront of LGBT rights back in the 1960s and 70s. Silvia was at the Stonewall riots and fought to protect not just trans people, but as many folks in marginalized communities as she could. I think it's really important to point out how all social, political, and cultural movements come from and start off in the LGBTQ communities of color. They walked so the rest of us could fly. And on a side note, trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary and gender non-conforming people are valid. I'm not in the LGBTQIA communities, but I am an ally, so step off, putos. Number five, Jovita Idar a journalist and activist who focused her energy on fighting injustice in the Mexican-American community, Jovita went to Congress to address education and economic justice for Latin people in America. She reported on violence and lynchings against the Hispanic community in Texas. Jovita fought for women's suffrage, aka the right to vote. She was even a nurse during the Mexican Revolution. I like to picture Jovita walking around places with rifles on her back, smoking cigars, like an old-timey badass action hero. The most badass fight is the one against injustice. Number six, Octaviano Ambrosio Larasolo, the very first Hispanic United States Senator. Collectively, we have this romanticized Horatio Alger myth that you can start off with nothing and achieve everything. All you need is hard work and you can pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. A lot of the time that is just a fantasy tale, but in the case of Lara Solo, that's exactly what he did. Lara Solo came to the U.S. with nothing and through hard work, education, and not letting anyone get in his way, he got a law degree, became governor of New Mexico, and afterwards was the first Hispanic U.S. senator. Incredibly impressive and inspiring for an immigrant who had nothing. It's that L. Woods F you, I'm achieving all my dreams mood. Nice. Number seven, Cesar Chavez. When folks watched this video I did about East LA and I mentioned Cesar Chavez, people feel the need to tell me weird conspiracy theories about Chavez. So strange for such a respected hero of the Latin community. We are very super pro-union in this house. So Cesar Chavez working to get farm and field workers unionized gets a major thumbs up from us. Migrant workers, farm workers, field workers get overlooked and easily exploited. So it is beyond important for those folks to get help and representation the way Chavez worked to get it. We have to help those who feed us every day. Bafflingly, a controversial figure, but a very important one. Number eight, Roberto Clemente. A pioneer for Latin Hispanic folks in baseball, Clemente was an amazing baseball player that had teams fighting each other over who could sign him. Roberto was signed to the major leagues just a few years after the color barrier was officially broken in 1947. I say officially because as I point out in this video, Latin Hispanic folks have been playing baseball since the beginning of baseball. Clemente was was proud of being an Afro-Latino from Puerto Rico. He didn't want his name to be anglicized and he was not ashamed of his English is my second language accent. Roberto spoke out against racism toward the Hispanic Latin community. He helped Puerto Rico with relief after a major earthquake. Then Clemente tragically died in an airplane crash trying to take aid to the people of Nicaragua after they suffered through an earthquake as well. A lot lot of stupid Fox News tools will tell athletes to shut up and play, but it is very important for those folks with a platform to use that platform for the greater good. Number nine, Carlos Santana. When folks talk about the greatest guitar players in history, you always hear Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, Clapton, etc., but you don't really hear about Carlos Santana. It might be because Santana doesn't do straight rock. His style is more 
more of a fusion of different genres, like a good Mexican. Santana put together all the styles he loved into his music to make great and classic rock fusion. Jazz, blues, Afro-Cuban, and rock and roll all rolled into one. Not bad for a kid born in Atulan de Navarro, Mexico, who went from playing dive bars in Tijuana to playing at Woodstock just a few years later. Hot take, Smooth is a good song actually. Not the mega banger of his earlier work, but still very solid. Rock on kids. Number 10, Cheech Marin. This one might seem really silly and odd. How is a stoner comedy pioneer an inspirational Latin Hispanic figure? Hasn't anyone taught you not to judge a book by its cover? Richard Anthony Marin is a fellow hood baby from South Central Los Angeles. The name Cheech comes from the fact that one of his uncles thought he looked like a chicharron when he was a baby. A pioneer of comedy and the counterculture of the 1960s, Cheech doesn't get the credit of doing insightful and nuanced comedy about being a Latino in America. Cheech's Born in East LA is still a funny and thoughtful look into racism, stereotypes, an identity for Mexican-American kids. Nothing to groan or roll your eyes at. It's the kind of comedy that doesn't feel preachy or sanctimonious. Not easy to do when you are pointing out things about race and stereotypes. Also, Cheech did really, really well at Celebrity Jeopardy. I know that Celebrity Jeopardy isn't the hard one, but freaking Anderson Cooper could not get over the fact that Cheech Marin beat him at Celebrity Jeopardy. Prove that those of us from the hood who went to a state school for college are smart too, all right? What's your favorite Cheech comedy bit? Intermediate thoughts. If you guys want to read more about these pioneers, trailblazers, and badasses, I've left links to biographies in the Carcancha down there. Who are your guys' historical hero or heroes? Let me know. Part two of this list is coming next week. Salud, mi familia.